Welcome back to the Tiger's Den Podcast, guys. Before we get started, you know what we got to do. Smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. Don't forget, ring that bell. Join the Noti Squad. Hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Twitter, IG, and Facebook at Big C Got Game. Well, our Tigers move to 5-0 on the season after a sluggish start against Texas A&M, but they turned it up in the second quarter. Finally pulling away, 63-23 to was your final. Grambling was down 10-7 to at the end of the first quarter, then went on a run, putting up 20 points in the second quarter, 22 in the third, and then 14 in the fourth. Senior QB Chris King had a rough day, 22 of 31 for 315, three touchdowns, but he threw three interceptions, completing 70% of his passes, and uh, 43 was his longest. He was sacked one time. You know, we've come to expect Chris to throw some interceptions just because he's a gunslinger, uh, but three interceptions, that's a lot. On the ground, Pierre Jackson continues his stellar season. His first five games, he is putting up some big numbers. This week, he went for 25 carries for 153 yards and three touchdowns. And big shout-out to my guy Kevin Easley, six carries for 69 yards and two scores. The run game has just been dominant this season. Between these two, they had over 200 yards rushing. Out wide, Jordan Paxson led the way. Ten grabs for 150 yards and two touchdowns. Antonio Walker had five catches for 89 yards and a touchdown. And Bobby Smith had four catches for 32 yards. Now, on defense, it was a rough start for our guys. They could not contain the run game, but they finally brought it back together and got their act together. Rayshon Baker led the way with seven tackles and a sack, and he had an interception. Shout out to Ken Johnson. He had another interception this week. Mike Anderson, three sacks on the day. Caleb Causey had a sack, and Torian Ray had two sacks on the day. Shout out to Jones. He also had a sack on special teams. I think we've come to expect it every week. Shout out to Eric Rodgers, five returns for 208 yards and a touchdown. This guy is special. He took one back 105 yards to the house. So we dig deeper into the stats, and Grant State dominated across the board with almost 550 yards of total offense putting up 227 yards on the ground, 315 through the air. The defense held Texas A&M to 8 of 18 on third down, while we had 6 of 9 on third down, 2 of 3 on fourth down, and then we went 7 of 7 inside the red zone. Again, just dominating 830 total yards on the day. Taking a look at the polls going into week five, Grambling State still sitting at number one, and they have a bye this week. USC in at two. Oklahoma's three. Ohio State moves up two spots to four. Florida moves up two spots to five. Navy cracking the top six. They are two spots up from eight. Colorado's up two spots to seven. Texas up two spots to eight. Louisiana Lafayette is up two spots to nine. And Mississippi State is up two spots to ten. Interesting that Lafayette and Navy both got uh, votes to be the number one team this week. That's very interesting. So we are in a bye week this week, so that means we can hit the trail and check out the recruiting board. If you haven't already, make sure you guys check out the recruiting special. I break down each player and show the players that have already signed with Grambling State. But right now, let's take a look at the top 10 prospects on our board and see where we are in the race. Uh, big tight end Sheldon Hicks, 6'5", 230, the number one tight end from North Carolina. We're in a tight race with Michigan right now. We have a slight lead over the Wolverines. Number two on our board is the number one corner from New Jersey is Tony Hardy. Uh, we are in a tight race with Ohio State. We're trailing by almost 800 points, but I believe that we can still catch up and we can get Hardy on campus. We're looking at another corner, too. This is Carlos Parker. He's the number five corner from Florida. Uh, we are starting to break out. We have a big lead over Alabama, Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan. On the defensive line, we're looking to add another stud. This is Daniel Sapp. He's 6'6", 272, the number five defensive end from Washington. And it's a close race between Boise State, Gramlin State, and UNLV. We're looking to add more depth on the offensive line. This is Gavin Jackson, number two guard from Maryland. He's a four-star prospect. And we're in a dogfight right now. We're trailing big time behind USC and West Virginia. Defensive end A.J. Coker from Ohio. He's 6'6", 255. He was just on campus this past week. And he's narrowed his, cho his choices down to Mississippi State and Grambling State. He's got a visit coming up later with Mississippi State this season. 
We always like to bring in an extra quarterback in our recruiting class. This is Adam McDonald. He's 6'5", 201 from Salinas, California. He reminds me a lot of Chris King, and right now he is falling in love with Grambling State. We have a big lead over Nebraska and Michigan. We head down to Texas to check out this prospect. This is Joe Bell, 6'2", 179, the number 11 athlete in the country, and he is a cornerback. Uh, he's a big fan of Grambling State. He has the Tigers above ULM, Nebraska, Colorado, and Cal. We're still looking for more depth on the offensive line. This is William Brown. He's the number five tackle from Tula Vista, California. And we have the lead over Colorado State, Stanford, Penn State, and UCLA. All right, guys, keep up to date with everything Grambling State and the recruiting class by following your boy on Facebook, Twitter, and IG at Big C Got Game. I'll be updating weekly what's going on with our recruiting class. So this week, our Tigers hit the road down to Austin, one of my favorite cities in the country to take on the number seven ranked Texas Longhorns. They come in four and one on the season after beating FCS Northwest, then losing to West Virginia, but then getting back on it there on a three-game winning streak, beating Kansas State, Iowa State, and FAU. The Longhorns are led by Darius Nichols. He's a 6'5", 218-pound junior QB who is injured. So that means we'll see his backup, Clint Chase, and he's no slouch, 6'5", 214. He's thrown for 935 yards, nine touchdowns, and four interceptions. He's an 87 overall as a sophomore, and this kid is special. Look at his speed. Look at his throw power. Look at his accuracy. He can break tackles. He's elusive. He can truck. We're going to have our hands full with this guy this week. In the backfield is the big back, Myron Thomas. He's 6'3", 216. He's rushed for 443 yards and one touchdown. But his backfield mate is Gary Yancey. He's another stud, 358 yards on the ground and eight touchdowns. This looks like it's a run team first, so we make sure we have to wrap up this week. No big hits, no trying to strip the ball. Just get your arms around the guy and take him down. And look at this. Chance is even a runner, 267 and three touchdowns. Out wide, David Clayton leads the way with 19 grabs for 310 yards and six touchdowns. I bet he's a good – well, he's a solid – guy he's great hands great route running great catch in traffic great spec catch his speed and acceleration aren't that great but his catching ability is what makes him a star Richard Bowie is on the other side of the field he's got 17 catches for 218 and this is your speedster right here 93 speed 96 acceleration but look at that the catching and the route running the catching traffic all great we are going to have our hands full with this Longhorns offense. Then you have Lawrence Murray. He's 6'3", 199. He's a senior. He's a 92 overall, and he's another speedster. 97 speed, 98 acceleration, 89 catching, 99 route running. Man, this game has me nervous now. They have three stud wide receivers, all 90 plus, a sophomore quarterback who's an 87 overall, and two 90 overall running backs. I feel like this is going to be a shootout this week. On defense, right outside linebacker David Murphy leads the way with 28 tackles, followed by his other linebacker mate, Corey Fletcher. He has 22 tackles on this season. Wow. Cornerback Justin Bryant leads the team with sacks with two. Then you have David Murphy with one and a host of other players with a half of sack. And in the interception department, David Murphy has one. Free safety Joseph Jefferson has one. And corner Justin Bryant has one. So let's dig deeper into the team and see what this Longhorns defense is looking like. So taking a look at the Texas defense, Jack Parson is your left end. He's a stud, 86 overall junior, great strength, great acceleration. Then you have Phil Mitchell and Austin Moody at right end. Up the middle, David Berry is a hole plugger, 6'1", 286, great strength and, and acceleration. Then you have Adam Gaddis, who's a senior Six foot three oh nine. On the outside, Travis Green, 83 overall, and Alex Dixon an 83 overall. So I'm pretty sure these two rotate in and out. Up the middle, we like we said before, Corey Fletcher is the playmaker on this defense. Followed by David Murphy, who leads the team in tackles. In the secondary at corner, they're kind of weak. Uh I expect them to be a little bit better, but Justin Bryan has great speed with 96 overall, great man coverage, great zone coverage, and great press. Uh, the only thing he does not have is great agility and great acceleration. On the other side is George Washington. He's 5'11", 172. Decent speed with 93. 
And his coverage ability is okay with an 88 overall in man coverage and a 92 overall in zone. In the slot is Victor Richardson, the 6'1", 186-pound redshirt freshman. He's another quick guy, man, 95 speed, 97 acceleration. He's more of a zone cover than a man coverage line or cornerback. Uh, maybe we could take advantage of that with Jordan Paxson. And then there's Brett Merrick, six foot one ninety one freshman from Texas, and he's decent too. Ninety five speed, eighty two man coverage, eighty four zone coverage, eighty five press. In the back half, you have Joseph Jefferson, who is hurt this week at free safety. So his backup, Mike Galloway, six five two nineteen. My gosh, this guy is a beast. Ninety eight speed, ninety four acceleration, eighty seven tackle. Look at the zone coverage, and he could lay the hit. Oh, my gosh. This team is scary, man. I'm not going to lie. And then you have strong safety, Matt Arnold, 5'9", 174. Kind of on the slower side, but the zone coverage is great. The man coverage is great. He can hit 91 hit power, 80 tackling. God, this team makes me nervous. They have a freshman kicker that's an 82 overall, and then a freshman punter that's an 84 overall. And it looks like Herbie is rolling with Grambling State this week. Could the Tigers be on upset alert? Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. Don't forget to ring that bell. Join the Noti Squad. Hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Twitter, IG, and Facebook at Big C Gat Game. And we'll talk from Austin, Texas, where our Grambling State Tigers are going to have their hands full with the Longhorns. Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace.